Welcome back everyone to Ein Sof Learning. Today we're going to continue with the laws of Shabbat pertaining to baking challah and doing laundry on Erev Shabbat. Let's begin. 22. Part of the mitzvah of honoring the Shabbat is to make a dough on Erev Shabbat that is large enough to be able to fulfill the mitzvah of hafrashat challah. Hafrashat challah is whenever we set aside a good piece of the dough for the sake of atoning for Eve's sin in the garden, how she was the first to fall for the trick of the snake. To atone for that sin, women bake challah, and whenever they're making the challah, they set aside a piece of the dough from that patch, that batch that was meant to be come into the challah uh, for the sake of atoning for that sin. The Kabbalistic significance of that is not going to be learned in this video, but there is intense meaning and understanding as to why we do that. The amount of flour that must be used in order to fulfill this mitzvah is 1,560 grams, which is 1.56 kilograms of flour. One only has to separate a minute amount for the mitzvah of hafrashat challah. Just a minute amount of the dough has to be set aside. And it should then be set aside and burned. So you don't throw it away, you don't eat it, you don't feed it to the dog, no. You put it aside so that way you can burn it. Very good. I mean, these are, again, there is reasons for that. There are reasons for that. 23. If one does not have enough time to complete all of the preparations on Friday, including baking challah, then it is better to do the other preparations on Thursday and have time to bake the challah specifically on Friday. So baking uh, challah on Friday overrides doing other preparations for Shabbat. So you would break on Friday and do the other preparations on, say, Thursday. That's only if you don't have time to bake the challah and the other preparations on Friday. If you don't have enough time, then you do the challah on Friday, but the other things you can do it earlier. 24. It is better to make a lot of challahs in order to perform hafrashat challah. Even if one does not need so much and will have to freeze the remaining challah for later weeks. So I was saying here, it's a, it's a mitzvah, uh, not a mitzvah, but it's a halacha, it's a good thing to do, to bake many, many chalot, many chalas. Even though you're not going to necessarily need all of those for the particular meal of Shabbat, but you can freeze them and put them for next week. But the reason it's good to do is because you can do the mitzvah of haf rashat chala in greater amounts, you know. You can do it for all of the chalot. In Kabbalah, the tradition of the, of the Kabbalists, they, they actually bake 12 chalot, and they use 12 chalot. They don't necessarily eat all of them, but they do the hamotzi ritual, which is the uh, you, you wash your hands, and you come and you do the prayer, the blessing over the bread, and then you eat the bread, which is really the beginning of the meal, uh, with 12 chalas as the floor, and then they, whatever, I'm not, I'm not going to get into the significance of that. I, I honestly am not learned in, my, in it myself. But just to give a little bit of a sneak peek. <laughs> uh, 25. One who is generally lenient to eat bread which was baked by a non-Jew should be stringent on Shabbat to only eat bread which was baked by a Jew. So there's two types of approaches to buying and eating bread. One is that the bread was baked by a non-Jew. And the other one is that the bread was baked by a Jew. The people who take the lenient approach will eat the bread that was baked by a non-Jew or a Jew. It doesn't matter. That's the lenient approach. But the stringent approach is that you would purchase the bread that was baked by a Jew. So on Shabbat it says, even if you normally take the lenient approach during the week, the six days, you should take the, the stringent approach on Shabbat to only purchase bread that was baked by a Jew. And there's reasons for that that pertain to the laws of kosher for, the, for reasons that I can't get into right now. Doing laundry on Erev Shabbat. 26. The, Chachma, the Chachamim instituted that one should wash the laundry on Thursday or any other day preceding Friday in order that one will be able to focus on Friday with the preparations for Shabbat. However, since nowadays the laundry is washed with a washing machine and it doesn't take so long to uh, 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 wash by hand, one may even wash his clothes on Friday. So in the old days, they didn't have washing machines. It said, okay, Thursday is better, even earlier is better. But since today we have washing machines, we can do it very quickly. It's okay for you to do those, uh, those uh, preparations of, of, of 
laundry, uh, washing your clothes in the laundry machine on Friday. But if you're going to wash with your hands, then you should do it before. 27. It is preferable to do the laundry on Thursday and not before Wednesday in order to show that one is doing so in honor of Shabbat. So it's saying that if you're doing the laundry by your hand, uh, then it's better to do it on Thursday instead of Wednesday, not earlier. I made a mistake before. I said before, even earlier than Thursday. But here it's saying, no. It's better to do it on Thursday and not before Wednesday. Oh, it says not before Wednesday. So I guess Wednesday is okay. Not on Tuesday, not on Monday. But Thursday is ideal. Wednesday is okay too. But the reason why Wednesday and Thursday is because it's towards the end of the week. So it shows that you're doing it for the sake of Shabbat. You're not cleaning your clothes so you can have clothes to wear on Thursday and Friday. You're cleaning your clothes so you can have clothes, clean clothes to wear on Shabbat. Your best clothes. 28. Even when washing by hand, one may wash his clothes on Friday if he has no other clothing for Shabbat. So if you have no other clothing for Shabbat and you're washing by hand, wash on Friday, I guess. It says here, I mean, you should do it on Thursday, if not Wednesday. But if you really have no other alternative, you have to wash. You need clean clothes for Shabbat. So it says on Friday is okay to wash uh, with your hands as well. 29. Suits or pants which can be worn repeatedly without becoming dirty are not required to be cleaned on a weekly basis. You know, if it's clean, why am I going to clean it? If it's clean, you don't need to put it in the laundry. If it's not clean, you clean it. But suits and, and suit pants generally last a few times. You can wear them before you clean them. You get them to the dry cleaning. But that's uh, as long as you don't spill any wine on your, uh, your nice white button down <laughs> on Shabbat, which happens very often, which, by the way, is a very good thing. From what I've heard, when wine spills on you, it's a sign of blessings pouring down from Shamayim, from heaven, and uh, has a lot of good meaning for the coming week. So this has been a total of eight laws, eight halachot pertaining to Shabbat, specifically with baking challah and doing laundry on Erev Shabbat. Just a reminder, Erev Shabbat is the 24 hours preceding. And just a reminder, Erev Shabbat pertains to the 24 hours before Shabbat begins on Friday evening. So, very good. We've done 29 laws so far in this series. In the next episode, we're going to learn the laws of cleaning the house on Erev Shabbat, which is very important. And then, perhaps we'll do some from getting a haircut on Erev Shabbat. But we might do that in the, in the following one. But uh, yeah, stay tuned and I will see you in the next video.